welcome. Uh, my name is Andrea Aime. I work for Geo Solutions, a company, uh, an international company with offices in Italy and the United States. We support and uh, participate in the development of a number of open source projects. We believe in open source, in open standards, and uh, uh, of course, as a result, we are involved in OGC API at least some level. So let's have a look at it quickly, very quickly, at the, the common elements of OGC APIs. It's a fresh take on transmission data interoperability based on open API RESTful concepts. So you have resources, you have presentations, you have HTTP verbs or methods. Each API is based on a small core, a basic service that can be literally implemented in a matter of a few days, and extensions for every other functionality. And the core tends to be really, really small. The common is uh, specified in OGC API common, which you can find at uh, that address. It uh, adds the idea of a landing page, which is your entry point to an API. A conformance declaration, which is a list of conformance classes, which specify what your specific implementation does and does not, by extension, do. For services that do expose data, not all services do, then you have also collections and the notion of a single collection resource. Um, linking is a very important aspect in all OGC APIs. Every resource is linked with each other. APIs are browsable. You can land on the landing page and reach everywhere, or almost everywhere. We will see one exception um, by following links. If you have an HTML representation of resources, you can do so from your browser. So very easy to get into them and learn them by just playing. Uh, each resource has a representation, um, can have multiple representations. OGC API Commons recommends HTML and JSON as two possible representations. They are not mandatory. Uh, most implementation of services implement JSON. Some implement HTML. You are free to implement whatever other uh, representation you want. How do you choose the representation? By using the accept header, just like any uh, regular HTTP client or uh, eventually through a custom query parameter. OGC API Common makes the example of using F that you can use whatever you want really, as long as you just bake it into the links. The, the client don't need to know what parameter you use, they just follow links. Um, extensions and conformance, as I said, tiny core, bare minimum, and modular extension for everything else. And this is a HTML representation of a conformance class page from GeoServer from OGC API features. Common bits of the GeoServer uh, flavor of OGC APIs. OGC APIs are very flexible. They can be implemented in a mm, variety of ways. What's the GeoServer take on it? Uh, one service per API. We don't do the giant tree with all the APIs uh, uh, break, mm, baked uh, all together. We have uh, a pro, a, an approach that mirrors the classic OGC services. So we have an OGC API features service and then an OGC API task, but they don't overlap. Uh, so it matches one-to-one -one the classic OGC services, and implementation-wise, we have the classic OGC service and the OGC API talk to the same internal engine. So basically, there, there is a level that handles the protocol, how you make the request, and how the responses should be generated, which talks to an internal engine that accesses data, does stuff, filters, reprojects, uh, whatever, and then returns the responses. So as a result, uh, you will see that the OGC API implementation mirrors the functionality of the classic OGC service pretty closely. Um, I, or, uh, I already said that. This, OK. We have HTML representation for each and every uh, service, unlike other OGC APIs, like many stack services, for example, tend to have only an OGC, uh, sorry, a JSON uh, representation for resources. We have one in HTML that can be customized through templates. So you are in control, you can customize the way it looks, the logos, and uh, the contents as much as you like. We just give you a data model and you do whatever you want with it. And we'll see an example from DLR, the German Space Agency. Links are also customizable. GeoServer puts in uh, the basic links that uh, the, the, the specification mandates should be there but you can add whatever link you want in addition. We did this work uh, under the sponsoring of GeoNovo uh, for Inspire compliance because the OGC API features flavor of Inspire requires extra links which are normally not there in GeoServer, such as uh, license, described by, enclosure, uh, links that allow you to do extras. We made it configurable because 
We didn't want to have a, 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 a rigid inspire implementation and then uh, do another for another standard and so on. You just go and implement whatever link you want to abide to whatever standard you need to. Okay, let's have a look at the first service of GC API features. The core, in addition to, well, uh, OGC API commons, adds the notion of items inside uh, a collection. The only supported CRSs are CRS84, that is WS84 in longitude, latitude order, mind the order, or CRS84H, which have the capacity height. Schema is not required, unlike WFS. You can have schemaless services as much as you like. So it's not that you must do, you can. So in the specific just server implementation, we tend to be schema oriented because the, the core engine is schema oriented. So the, the features do share a common structure, but uh, at the specification level, you don't have to. You can uh, have your own elastic search with a uh, full of uh, document with unrelated structures, and you can still publish it through OGC API features correctly. If you have a, a, um, a schema, then you can use the described by relationship to link to it. This is an example of the uh, Swagger uh, uh, HTML representation of the API. Same items that we have seen before, nothing new. Uh, at the items level, this resource lists the content of a collection. So it's the equivalent of a get feature in WFS. The result is typically a GeoJSON document if you implemented the GeoJSON conformance class, but in GeoServer it could be also GML, KML, CSV, whatever. Basically all the output format that you would find in WFS are also found in OGC API features. In terms of filtering, uh, you have bounding box in Surrey 84, daytime, single time, time range, and you could have extra parameters declared in the API document. We don't do that, which allow for filtering by equality. So you, you say CT equals Milan, for example. I, we believe that that's a little bit too uh, rigid. Uh, it doesn't offer enough functionality, so, functionality, so we didn't uh, end up implementing it. But this is an example of a request that uses all three approaches. Paging. Uh, I mean, OGC API feature service is pageable. Um, every uh, time you make a request, you get to the first page, and the first page has links that you can follow to get to the next page, and so on and so on. Every server implements the links whatever, whatever way they please. The client just blindly follows the links. Next relationship, you go to the next page. Prior to the relationship, you go to the previous page. That's it. Site compliance, through the GeoNovum sponsoring, we made GeoServer 224.x, which is the development branch, pass the OGC API core compliance test suite uh, a month ago. Give or take, maybe two. Then there is part two. Part two is a uh, series by reference. It's about uh, supporting more coordinate reference systems than just WGS84. You can de declare your storage CRS, that is how the data is actually stored, because we have to go out in CRS84 by default, so the projection on the fly is baked into the, into the system. And then you have a list of CRSs that you can reproject to, and then you can make your own request. Um, I don't know an example, but it's end CRS equals to whatever you want, and the OGC API features would reproject the data for you. Uh, turning it out in whatever format you choose. This is also compliant. We made the compliant again through the sponsoring of a GeoNovo. Filtering. Filtering is in draft. It's not a finalized specification like the other two. It introduces the notion of queryables, that is the attributes that you can build a filter on. This is important, this is interesting. In WFS, you could query against every attribute, but let's be honest, in a database you never index every attribute, right? So there are attributes which are fast for filtering, attributes which are not well suited for filtering. With the notion of queryables, you can actually have a choice of what you want to, to make available for, for filtering. And then you have the three parameters, filter, filter lag, and filter CRS, to specify your filter. So the, uh, this part does not uh, mandate a particular filtering language. It just provides a mechanism for filtering. And then there is another specification called SQL2 that you can use to provide a filter. SQL2 looks a little bit like the old SQL that GeoServer implements. The, some parts are different, some uh, spatial and temporal interactive operator names have changed, stuff like that. 
but more or less the basics are the same. And you have two flavors of it, SQL2 text, human readable filter, or SQL2 JSON, machine, easily machine processable uh, implementation of the same. Do you have a support for both? Do you support sorting? Sorting is not part of any you know, of any part of the OGC API feature specification. It's something that we borrowed from OGC API REST with a, as I'd say, pretty sensible uh, implementation. Sort by, and then uh, the name of the properties you want to sort by. You want to sort the setting. You add a minus sign for pretty easy. Uh, sorry. What is going on here? Stack API. Stack API is another API that we implement and that has uh, a finalized specification or at the very least an RC. Stack API is a spatial temporal asset catalog. It allows you to search for the common case uh, satellite imagery, but really anything that is located in space and time and that can be downloaded as files is uh, a good candidate to, to be put into a Stack API. Stack API can be implemented as compatible with OGC API features, so you can have an API that is up to both, and that's how we do it in GeoServer indeed. Um, in, in terms of implementation, we have the notion of a collection which contains products, your uh, satellite imagery, and each product then contains in the balance of uh, stack assets, which are typically the, the single raster files making up the bands and the metadata and uh, whatever other information you might want to attach to, uh, the, um, to the product. And GeoServer allows you to do searches, but also to do on-the-fly mosaicing of the contents uh, of the images. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, this is an example of customization made by the German Space Agency on the collections page, so they customize the, the logos, part of the content, they have the pictures, and so on, so that you have an idea of how powerful the customization subsystem is. OGC API coverages. This is a work in progress. It's a work in progress both at the specification level and at the GeoServer implementation level. OGC API coverages could be thought of as the simplest WCS error. Uh, it has been uh, partially implemented during a code sprint. We participated to an OGC API code sprint, and in a couple of days, we put together something. It's not complete. The idea is that uh, um, you can take a collection. A collection is a coverage. And uh, uh, then you have a, a few sub-resources that describe the content of the coverage. You have one sub-resource, which is uh, the coverage itself, which is everything, all the data, all the metadata. But you can also have the domain set the spatial component of the coverage, the range type, the, the bands, let's say, the description of the bands that are typed, what, how many, and so on. Uh, the range set, which is the pixels, and the metadata, which is everything else. When you merge these four together, you get coverage. So this is your presentation as GeoTIF, CDF, or whatever. And you can do coverage extraction either by bounding box or uh, using subset. Subset is uh, an interesting take on uh, the axis or the ratio. You know, with using OGC APIs, you know that you are using WGS84, but you're, you're trying to use something else, what's the access order? Well, uh, with subset, there, there is no question, there is no doubt. You specify a range of latitude, a range of longitude. I could have done the opposite, it would have been the same, because I'm explicit about which axis I'm talking about. So, no more access order problem if I'm using subset, at least in the request. Okay, OGC API maps. Is another API which is in draft. It's an API which is specified from the ground up as a building block rather than a service like OGC API features. And we have a partial implementation of it from an OGC API code sprint. Um, the building block is to produce map, so it can be attached to anything, any resource that can be mapped. You have a raster, you map it. You have a redactor, you map it. You have a WPS output process, you map it. So you attach slash map to these things. Um, <clears throat> the Maps API also introduces the notion of a style with a style identifier, just like in WMS, so that you can have multiple representation of the same resource. And then you have a map resource, which is to have to get the map. The nice thing uh, about uh, the Map API is that it looks a little bit like WMS, but no parameter is actually mandatory. Well, besides the collection name. You just say, I want a map of the United States, period. The, the, the server defaults everything else. 
You want a map in GeoTIFF, then say so. You want a map that is 1024 pixels, then say so. But you don't have to. Everything is defaulted. So there are parameters with height, people, CRS, and more, but you don't have to specify them. The info source, I say GS specific. When we implemented the, the API, it was actually part of the specification, but then it was removed. It's probably going to be part one or part two. In, in any case, not core, an extension. And uh, it follows the same pattern. You specify I and J, those two are mandatory, to identify which pixels you are querying, and that's it. Uh, as I said, not part of the core. To be honest, in, even in WMS, it was part of the specification, but it was not mandatory. You could have done a valid WMS without featuring code. No, almost nobody does, but it was valid. OGC API types. This is a work in progress from the point of view of the G server implementation, but the building block for types is finalized. It's at this address. It also reads as a building block rather than a service. So the idea is that you have a source, you have a source that can be sliced, into parts, then you can attach tiles to it. So you have a collection. I can tile the data. I can tile the vectors. I can tile the rasters. I have a map. I can tile it. I can do PNG tiles, uh, JPEG tiles. I have, uh, you know, whatever, a, WP, uh, a process API that's uh, building something, and then I can retrieve it through APIs. What does the block add? Um, it has a tiles resource. And the tiles of truth is interesting because it has one use case where you cannot just follow the links. Why? Millions and millions and millions of tiles. Can I do links to all of them? Of course not. It's not practical. So I have a URL template instead. So I have a recipe to get to the tiles. And then I read the um, tile limits that tells me for each zoom level which ranges are supported for X, Y, and Z. And then I know how to fetch the tiles. Uh, there is also, in some implementation, not part of the standard, a tiles metadata resource. Your server has it, LD proxy has it, which is an interesting take uh, about interoperability across ecosystems. So the metadata resource is about describing the tile set again, but in a way that is not the, let's say, the, the, the normal OGC way. And uh, um, in both LD proxy and your server, we do the JSON imp implementation of the resource as time JSON. Tag JSON is an open specification by Mapbox, which a Mapbox client can read in order to fetch tiles. So they read the specification for either PNG tiles or vector tiles, and they know how to inter interact with the API. They will interact with the OGC API without even knowing it, because we will we trick them into building the right URLs. Other APIs. So we have an implementation of OGC API X tiles, which is an interesting new uh, API. All the APIs that I gave you so far had an equivalent in OGC services. This one is new. If you are just server users, you know that we have a style catalog inside your server, but it has always been something like private. Uh, the, the name of the styles pop up in the WMS service, but you don't get to, to read the styles. Fast forward to today, you got clients that can get vector tiles and render stuff on their own. But where do, where do they get to the styles? Do they have to start from scratch? That doesn't seem reasonable. You could expose a style catalog instead. And this is what it is. Styles API allows to search and inspect styles and download them in a variety of representations if you have them. And eventually also to upload styles. Okay. And uh, yeah, so you. You, you can do all these things which you couldn't do before. Another interesting API that we have a prototype implementation of in GeoServer, the GGS API, the Script Global Grid Systems, uh, which allow to represent the world as a set of um, cells, which are multi-resolution. Uh, we have two uh, GGSs here, RealPix and uh, uh, H3 from Uber. And the GSR has an implementation of that, and has an implementation of a data, uh, which is a, a processing API, which allows you to, to say something like, uh, give me the average value of this band in this area. And uh, we have an implementation based on a, a database called ClickHouse, which is very, very quick at doing calculation, especially if you store the data as the GS. Moving forward, uh, next step, code. The OGC API in the server is a community module. We need to bring it to extensions, but we need to wait for the relevant specifications to become stable. 
we cannot have uh, an officially supported module with a uh, specification that moves under its feet. So for features, we are waiting at the very least for SQL 2, because it's kind of the bare minimum we, which we would consider. Uh, we need uh, to complete the implementations and uh, in, in, uh, more, uh, have more implementations. And uh, what else? Uh, we hope to see more and more uptake. Right now, we have like uh, a few research institutes or innovation institutes that have invested a little bit in uh, the development of EGC APIs, but we don't see uptake in the commercial sector. We hope that it is going to change soon. And with this, I'm done. Yeah.